Today is Earth Day, and both U.S. President Joe Biden and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau have made significant increases to the amount to the their country's commitments to lower GHG reductions by 2030. Now we're going to talk to Jimmy Smartsis from Lands and Jet, whose company has just entered into an agreement to supply sustainable fuel, uh, jet fuel, uh, and they've entered, entered an agreement with Shell. So welcome to the interview, Jimmy. Thank you. I'm glad to be here and uh, happy Earth Day. Well, look, uh, aviation is a significant source of GHG emissions. It's also one of the toughest sectors to decarbonize. What uh, can you tell us a little bit about your agreement with Shell? Yeah, happy to. Uh, perhaps off what I can also do is give you a perspective on uh, decarbonizing aviation from the point of view of someone who's also been at this for the better part of, of 12 years. Uh, we do welcome Shell uh, as an investor in Lanza Jet, which is a significant uh, deal for us, and I believe also for them. Uh, Lanza Jet is a leading uh, technology company that has what we call alcohol to jet technology that takes ethanol and through a process converts that into sustainable aviation fuel and renewable diesel. As you know, and as I'm assuming, um, your viewers also know aviation is a very difficult uh, to decarbonize sector. Uh, sustainable aviation fuel is absolutely fundamental to decarbonizing aviation in the near term um, and in the midterm, I would argue. And uh, we're, we're thrilled to be a part of the process and, and part of uh, you know, enabling that to happen for aviation. And as you point out, the news today from uh, the U.S. government and others is significant. Aviation is a key pillar of what they're looking to decarbonize. Now, Jimmy, when is it likely that we're going to see uh, renewable uh, jet fuel on the market? So you already have some today. So there have been uh, a couple of plants, uh, one here in the United States and one in Europe that is producing sustainable aviation fuel today. We are building a biorefinery in the state of Georgia here in the U.S. That will be up and running by the end of 2022. Uh, so Shell's investment in our company in Lands of Jet helps us to build up uh, the capability and the capacity of our company so that we're deploying the technology not just here in the United States but on a global basis uh, and helps us to also get the biorefinery in Georgia um, off the ground. That refinery for us will produce uh, about 10 million gallons of hydrocarbons a year, of renewable hydrocarbons. 90% uh, of that, which will be sustainable aviation fuel, and 10% will be renewable diesel. Now, uh, in your press release, you mentioned that your technology is scalable. So how quickly can we, can the industry scale up to reduce the amount of, uh, of hydrocarbons that are burned uh, in uh, jet planes around the world? Yeah, we're working hard at it. And some of us have been working hard at it since 2008. Um, it's, it's taken time to get technology ready, uh, to get technologies and processes approved through ASTM, uh, which is absolutely critical uh, in terms of the safety and the quality of the fuels that are produced. And our fuel is considered a drop in fuel. So there's no change needed for infrastructure at airports, infrastructure uh, and equipment on planes. Um, it is ready to be used and has the same characteristics as fossil fuel would have. Uh, except for it is cleaner. It has upwards um, of a 70% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, reduction in particulates, no sulfur. So it has all the good things that you need in order to um, operate a, a major aircraft uh, and doesn't have the negative things that impact the environment. Uh, we are not only our facility, but um, our plan is not only to build Georgia and have it up and running by 2022, but we also have a plan to have 100 million gallons of sustainable aviation fuel in the market by 2025. Well, that's uh, that's a significant growth. And I would assume that uh, partnering with a, a super major like Shell uh, has got to have benefits in terms of scaling it up and, and getting into uh, the market in a hurry. Uh, it, it, it certainly does. And we have, from the very beginning of launching the company, which launched in June of 2020, we were spun out of another company called Lanza Tech, which founded um, our, our, our company and, and also developed the technology over a 10-year period. Our founding investors, including 
uh, Suncor Energy out of Canada, Mitsui out of Japan, British Airways out of the UK, Shell, uh, which is the most recent addition, and certainly Lanzatech, gives us a global landscape to accelerate the uh, deployment of our technology. So our investors not only invested in the company at the very beginning, but they're also investing in subsequent commercial facilities um, over time. So we have a plan and a roadmap for getting to that 100 million gallons and beyond uh, here within the next handful of years. I, I've heard uh, a fair amount of criticism about ethanol in that, it, especially if it uses corn, that it actually comes with its own environmental uh, liabilities. Uh, how do you respond to that? And what kind of feedstock does your, do your plants use? Yeah, but you know the beauty of of ethanol is that ethanol is in production around the globe. You have low carbon ethanol here in the United States, uh, low carbon corn ethanol here in the United States. You've got sugarcane ethanol. You have ethanol from uh, cellulosic material. You have waste based ethanol. I mentioned Lanzatech. Lanzatech, which founded us, also has technology that leverages a gas fermentation process. They can take industrial waste gases from, uh, uh, think of a steel mill or other industrial plants. They can take municipal solid waste. They can take forest residues. Through their technology, which is commercially deployed, we can take those waste sources and convert them into ethanol. So in addition to the bio-based ethanol sources that exist around the globe, you also have innovative technologies like Lanzatex, which create, which recycle carbon and create clean ethanol. So from our point of view, we are focusing on low carbon ethanol. We are focusing on waste-based ethanol for our facility out of Georgia. Um, and uh, we are working on a global level in terms of sourcing that material. Uh, cellulosic ethanol does exist and we are uh, as well encouraging supply chains to further develop uh, to create additional supply. Uh, final question, Jimmy. Um, what does the next five to 10 years hold for Lanzajet? Significant growth, and I think we're seeing that uh, you know since our launch. Uh, I do believe that we are at an inflection point where you have technology that's ready and is scaling. You have uh, the financing community that is prepared and is contributing and ready to invest. You have corporate customers who want to see a difference in their scope three emissions. You've got airlines who are committing to net zero targets sooner. You have governments engaging. We truly have all of the right components uh, to, to, to seriously do this, right? And have an impact on, on climate change and uh, to take action. So for us, it is gonna be significant growth. We're seeing that already since our launch. I anticipate that over the next five to 10 years, we'll have significant volumes of sustainable av aviation fuel in the market. Jimmy, thank you very much for the insights. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Good to see you.